people with their communication needs so that it's very effective. Um, Kate, is, I'm sorry, Kate is also a performing artist, so she has a musical background. She knows a lot about voice, how to use your voice for your presence. Uh, what I, but what I, liked, I liked most about Kate when I heard her first presentation and then I read her book is that she has a very wholesome approach to communication. It's not about uh, pretending to look professional, sound professional. It's about what is it that you're really trying to say to the other person? What do you want to be heard about? And how do you structure it so that you get the most impact? Um, you know, whether you're pitching for a project or you're pitching for an idea within your group, no matter what it is, uh, there are some ways to do it that you can be heard much better. Um, so uh, at the end of this session, I hope that you'll take in the information about, you know, what are the things you should be thinking about when you are presenting an idea? And then what are some of the tools you can use which Kate will go into? And hopefully you'll use that knowledge in your day-to-day -day, uh, interactions with other people. And with that, I'd like to invite Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Sarpa. And thank you all of you for coming. I, I guess that my day started off in an interesting way. I was late to the airport, and then my plane was delayed, and I wasn't sure I was going to get here. And then, I'm being very transparent here, I sat in my chair, and my blouse opened up. <laughs> the zipper broke. <laughs> so I thought, you know, what, what else could go wrong? What else could go wrong? And so I, in, in my chair, I went to the side, and the guys beside me, thank God, were sleeping. And I managed to get it all together. And I thought, that's what this is about, it's about getting it all together and being prepared for anything that happens, right? So thank you all for being here. How many of you have a pitch that you are intending to give sometime? You should all be raising your hands, because as my husband says, you're either selling or being sold. <laughs> How many of you have a, are thinking about maybe doing a pitch sometime? You have an idea maybe you'd like to share, you're not sure. Okay, great. And how many of you are here because you like to watch reality television shows and they have a lot of pitches going on? Anybody? Okay. Well, actually, we're probably all here because of that reason. Because pitches have become so important and partly because people expect them now. You know, we watch those television shows, we watch Shark Tank, and you think, oh, I've got to give a pitch for my idea, which is not a bad idea, because a pitch is all about being prepared. It's being prepared to say what you need to say in the way that you need to say it to have the most impact possible. Now, I have a definition for a pitch, and I'm going to share that with you. A pitch is communication designed to persuade someone to support your ideas. What's really important about that is that a pitch is about action. It's about getting results. Now, if you look at the definition in the dictionary, you won't find much action in those, di in those um, definitions. Instead, you'll, say th you'll see things like a pitch is trying to pers persuade someone to, uh, to what is it? try to persuade someone to assist you or it's a casual toss. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but that first picture I had was not a casual toss. Right? And so I don't think of a pitch as a casual toss, and I don't want you to think of it that way. It's hugely important to keep the result in mind as you work with your pitch. Now, today, we're going to talk about several ideas that I would like you to write down. This is more like a workshop, by the way. I'm not really looking to do a talk as much as to get you thinking about things that you can do, tools that you can use, techniques that you can use. And so to start out, I'm going to tell you about my own experience with a couple of pitches. When I was in high school, I, w I had moved to California, Southern California. And in Southern California, if you're in high school, you probably work at some point in the entertainment industry. And that was true for me. My sister and brother worked at Disneyland. I worked at Knott's Berry Farm. And then when I went to college, I took a job at Movieland Wax Museum. Now, 
uh, Movie Land Wax Museum opened in 1962, and it closed in 2005. And the whole time that it was there, there was the opportunity for people coming through there to get their picture taken sitting on Frankenstein's lap. And that's what I got to do. I got to get people up there to do that. So I, said, I had a pitch. I said, come on up here, two, three, or four of you, for a souvenir photo with Frankie. And then I had a pitch for when they got up there. I had a pitch for when they decided they didn't want to get up there. I had a pitch for when I took the photo with a Polaroid camera, of all things. And I had a pitch for when they paid. It was very successful. It was a lot of fun. Now, the second pitch I'm going to tell you about is a pitch that didn't work so well. And this was later. After I got my Bachelor of Psychology degree, I went on to get a Master of Music degree in vocal performance. And after I got my degree, I was a starving artist. So although I was teaching voice and I was singing professionally, I took other jobs that would help pay the bills. And the best job that I had was working for a technology company. And this was my introduction to working with computers. It was a company called Heuristics. And they had created something called a speech lab, which was a system that snapped into your computer and allowed you to talk to your computer and get it to do things. At the time, it felt a little bit like Star Trek. But now, how many of you are aware of voice recognition and use it every day? You should all raise your hand again, right? Yes. But back then, it was brand new. And in fact, it didn't work. And so the reason they hired me was, as a friend said, I was the smoke and mirrors. Because I could say hello the same way 10 times in a row, no matter what the room was, because I was a voice person, then I could do I could get the computer to work more often than other people. <laughs> so that was my job. And the moral of this story is that a great pitch can get you to do silly things like even sit on Frankenstein's lap, but a great pitch cannot help you if you're not fully prepared with your idea. So we're going to talk today about how to know that your, if your pitch is ready. We're going to talk about how you find your audience, and we're going to talk about how you persuade that audience to listen to you. I'm not going to talk about what you should, how you should create your pitch, except that if you listen carefully and you take notes, you're going to learn things that you can use to develop that pitch. I'm not going to talk to you about how to stand or what to dress, or any of those things. But we are going to talk about the basics of being prepared to give a great pitch. And I want you to take notes. I want you to ask questions. And I want you to participate. We have an exercise that we're going to do together. I want you to participate in that and try to get something out of that, too. So the first thing we're going to look at is, is your idea ready? One second here. And the first thing I want you to do to make sure your idea is ready is keep it to yourself. Now, the reason I, I tell you that is because many psychological tests have shown that if you, if you share an idea too soon, then it will lose some of its energy. And you probably won't do it. This is called substitution. And imagine this. This is the way it works. Imagine you sit down with your mentor, and you just came up with this great idea. And so you go, oh, I've got to tell them about it. And you sit down, you tell them, and they say, that's a great idea. That's wonderful. And you leave, and you feel so good because that was a great idea. Well, that feeling, feeling so good, is enough psychologically for you to lose the momentum. So it's not that I don't want you to feel good about your ideas, but I want you to keep them to yourself unless you need some advice from someone, but be prepared to go in and know what you want and only then talk to people about it when you're ready. The second thing that I want you to do is I want you to ask questions. 
Now, when I prepare a pitch of any kind, I think about a model that I can use to test my idea. And I'm sure as technologists, engineers, you're all used to testing things. But how many of you actually test your idea? You know, I found that many people don't think it through all the way. And there are lots of ways you can do this. I'm not going to give you a model to test your idea, but I'm going to recommend that you find one. And there are some that I can suggest that will be on this uh, PowerPoint. At the very end of it, there's some suggestions. There's the Guy Kawasaki method that he suggests in the book Enchantment. There's also one, uh, the book Made to Stick. Anybody know that? Made to Stick. Chip and Dan Heath have a success model that you can, that you can look at and see how is my idea, how does it compare with that. Or if you're giving a TED Talk, there's a whole other model that you can use. In TED Talks, they tell you that you have to present your idea so that people walking away from it or surfing to the next video on the TED site will walk away with something, one thing, that they've learned or that they can take action on. So that's another model. And, it's, and you'd be surprised how hard that is to, to do when you've got an idea. Your idea's got all these other things around it, all these other ideas that come with it. And narrowing it down to one idea can be harder than you think. So ask yourself questions. Test yourself. Test your idea. And then when you think you're ready, the best thing you can do is align that pitch for impact. And this is how you do it. And in fact, if you're never going to pitch anything, this is still how you're going to have the most impact in all of your communication. You're going to understand what your intention is. You're going to make sure that your content aligns with it and that your delivery aligns with both. So let's talk about intention. Intention is an aim that guides action. I first started working with intention when I started practicing yoga. Anybody practice yoga? Right. So you know you get on the mat and you think about what you want to focus on as you're practicing your yoga. And that's really what you do with your, with your communication. What do I want to focus on? What's the most important thing today that I want to focus on in my communication? And what do I want to happen as a result of that? That's the important part. Remember I said with your pitch, it's active. What do you want to get out of it? What's the result that you want? That becomes your intention for your communication. Now, your content needs to align with that. And your content could be the words that you use. It could be the photos that you use. But it needs to be just, just as much as important to you to use that intention as a filter for that content as getting those slides to be pretty or interesting or full of the right information. And we could go into a long talk on PowerPoint, but we won't do that right now. <laughs> okay, the third is delivery. Now, delivery is not just the words that are the way that you say the words. It, it's where you stand on stage. It's how you use your body. It's how you use your voice. It's where you decide to have that conversation. Are you going to make the pitch in a hallway? or on a stage? Is it written? Is it a video pitch? Is it on television, on Shark Tank? Where is it going to be? Because that impacts how you deliver it. All right, so imagine your own pitch right now. Imagine that. Imagine your intention for it. What's the purpose? What's the, what, what result do you want to get? What's the best place to do that pitch? Is your content in alignment with that? Now, the focus right now is going to be, right, right this moment, is going to be on the intention. And we're going to look at intention as the why, the purpose behind your pitch. Many, many people say this is the <laughs> most important element of any pitch, the why, the purpose. So I want you to take a moment and think about your intention. 
or your pitch? What is the purpose behind it? Think that through. And take a second, if you want, and write that down. And now we're going to go through three steps to try to figure out an intention for the pitch that you're going to make. First of all, you want to identify not just your pur purpose, but your vision. What's your vision? What's your vision for your pitch? The second step is to identify how you want to interact with others. Do you want to educate them? Do you want to entertain them? A little bit of both. Do you want to excite them? Do you want to calm them down? What do you want, how do you want to interact with others? And then finally, determine the action you want others to take as a result of your pitch. What action do you want them to take? Do you want them to fund your idea? Do you want them to um, <clears throat> give you an opportunity? Do you want a new job? So what's your pitch about? What do you want? <clears throat> and none of this is about just trying. This is all about getting very clear about what you need and want from this situation. Okay, now I'm going to give, tell you to put that into a template. I know we're going fast here, but you're going to put your, what you just wrote into a template. <clears throat> and you will get this template with the slides later on. So you're going to put it into a template. And you can rephrase this, you can work on it. I encourage you to spend a lot of time on your intention because it's hugely important to what you're doing. <coughs> okay, we're going to look at, at that again in a second. And then I'll show you my statement of intention for today using the same format. My intention is to bring my vision of guiding leaders to transform hearts and minds into reality. I educate, entertain, and challenge this audience in order to persuade them to adopt my methods and recommend my work to others. That's my intention. I'm going to show you that template again. I'll give you another couple minutes to write yours down, and then I'd love to hear some of yours. Anybody want to share? Anybody will share even if they don't want to? Oh, great. I got the first part, not the second part. Okay. What's your vision? So my intention or vision is to my intention is to bring my vision of a transparent partner engagement process for crypto commerce to reality. Okay, good. But I don't know the second part. I'm okay, well, you can, you can keep working on that. Okay. All right? Think about what, what, how you want to do that. What do you want people to do as a result? How will you bring them into your vision? That's another way to think about it. How will you bring them into your vision? What's the best way to do that? Tell stories? Yes. Educate? No? Yeah. Okay. Supporting the process and giving their feedback. Okay. Yeah, align. Yeah. Align. Align them with all the different commerce managers. Okay, so is your intention then to get them to agree? Is that the action? Is that the result you want? Well, I don't need funding. I don't need funding. It's more of a. I I I think they all agree on it, but um, support and get get them to communicate to their their. Um, 
that they need to work on this process and support some of the milestones and some of the delivery requirements I'm asking that all of you to consider. Okay. Okay, so that's the result you're looking for. Right. In order to persuade them to do this. Right? Okay. Great. Someone else? Yes. Is it working on and off? Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because I wouldn't remember that yeah. whole thing. <laughs> but it was passionate. I loved that. <laughs> it was great. Someone else? Great. Why don't you, can you come up here and, and yeah. Great. Okay. Well, they can't hear you on the WebEx. That's the problem. I'll share. My vision is to have the world-class finance processes for all my finance stakeholders, and for that I would like to uh, educate and persuade my leadership team to secure the funding. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. One thing I would caution on that is to say I would like, yeah. instead of saying I would like, say my leadership team secures the funding. State it in the positive. You will visualize it much better if it's in, in the now and in the positive. And remember, what you focus on is what you make happen. So if you focus on, well, I hope, I wish, I, what, I really like this, but I'm not sure, that's what will happen. Anybody else? Okay, great. Thank you for sharing those. Who needs to hear your talk? Do you know who your audience is? Do you know who needs? Some of you have talked about your audiences. Mike is a little, yeah, that's okay. Um, do you know who your, who, who knows who your audience is for your idea? Are there those who don't know who your audience is? Are sure? Yes. Okay, good. Well, then the rest of you can take a break and... Uh, no. <laughs> All right, the first thing you have to do to find your audience is listen. And this is important for any communication. Listening is the flip side of conversation and equally as important. You will be a better speaker if you're a better listener. And when you listen, what you're listening for is what people care about. Because what you want to give them is what they care about. They won't listen to you if you don't listen to them and figure out what they care about. So that's the first thing. Uh, <laughs> I think this bottom panel oh, came up yeah. again. <laughs> technical difficulties. Oh, technical difficulties. <laughs> Great. Yep. Too far. Wrong one. Okay. Too far. That's all right. Huh. Something is missing there. Well, all right. And I'll just talk to you about it anyway. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. Now, who will benefit from your idea? That's what you want to know next. And the, how, how do you know if somebody's going to benefit from your idea? Give me some ideas. Yes. So 
they'll increase their profit lines by a percentage. Okay, great. They're looking for that increase. It's good for them. Yes, good. Something else. Okay, saving time. Right, good. Anything else? Yes. <coughs> Say that again. Okay, great. Good. Benefits. Good good benefits. Now, the important thing is that you know who who will benefit from it so you don't pitch to the wrong people. Right? Uh, an example. There was uh, on Shark Tank, there was in the second season. How many watched Shark Tank? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, in the second season, an inventor got up and pitched an alarm clock, a wooden alarm clock that woke people up by cooking bacon and making them smell of, smell bacon when they woke up. Well, the, yeah, the sharks didn't like it because, frankly, a wooden toaster is not a good idea, right? But the bacon bloggers loved it. So if the inventor had pitched the bacon bloggers, you might have gotten some support, right? So you've got to know who you are going to pitch to, and what's really important is to understand that it's when you pitch, it's never about you. It's never about you. It's always about the people in the audience. It's always about the people you pitch to. And in fact, again, that's a great thing to know about public speaking in general. When you stand up, how many of you get stage fright, anxiety in front of people? All right. The best thing you can learn is to, that when you get stage fright, it's because you're too focused on yourself. You're worried about what they think of you. Now, is uh, is my fingernail chipped? <laughs> what are they going to say? Am, are, you know, am I smart enough? Am I pretty enough? You're worried about all of these things instead of thinking about the service that you are doing for people in the audience. And every one of you can do something in front of an audience that will help them. You can talk about something. You're an expert in your area, and you can talk about that and give that gift to people. The more generous you are as a speaker, the better you are, and the less nervous you will be. It's a great lesson to learn, and I encourage you all to try that out next time. The next thing you need to know is who can provide what you need. So you might be talking to an audience who gives funding, but they may not, but you may not need funding, right? We all think we need funding. Well, we probably all do, but, <laughs> but, but it's not always about funding. Sometimes, what are some other things you might need from people? What support? Support. In, in various forms, support. Right, what else? Commitment. Commitment. Absolutely. What else? Advice. Advice? Sure. There are many things you might need from people. So make sure you know what you need and that you go to the right person to get what you need. You know, there was a, a – are you familiar with Plato? Yeah, Plato, right. Well, I'm not sure if you know this, but Plato was originally invented by a soap manufacturer to remove wallpaper. And it was 20 years later that his son found the product, which obviously didn't work very well for wallpaper removal, and said, oh, well, I want my kid to play with this. And then Play-Doh was born, and it stuck. Ah. Um, <laughs> so the other idea with pitching to the right people, people who can provide what you need, is sometimes when you pitch what you think, pitch for what you think you need, you actually get a different response. And that might not be bad. That might not be bad. Okay. How will you get them to listen? This is where we talk about engagement. What is engagement? What is engagement? What's that? Involving people. What else? Gaining consensus. Okay. 
Thank you. Active listening. So you know that they're actually listening to you. You know they hear you. You know that they are involved in what you have to do. Hello? In order to, in order to do that, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to prepare to persuade. This is a really useful group of principles that we're going to go over in a bit of detail. Is this obnoxious up here, this mic? Yes, okay. I'm trying to find a place where I can stand where it doesn't do that so much. This seems to be a little better, so I'll try to stay here. All right. I try to use lots of resources to come up with ways that I can understand better how people communicate. And this is one of the best ones I've found, which is Six Principles of Persuasive Speaking by Cialdini. And there is a book called Influence that he wrote. So, are we ready? Okay. Okay, great. The, the first principle is authority. And what you need to do with all of these principles is ask yourself if you have, if you have created a talk or a pitch that uses, that, that can fulfill all of these principles, that answers them. So authority is the first one. And authority means that you have the experience or the credentials or whatever it takes to be able to make this pitch or to create this idea. Authority also is used because people respond to authority. They want to listen to people who have authority. So one of the things you have to demonstrate, either through your bio, your resume, or in your talk, is that you have the authority. To, to talk about this. All right? Any questions about authority? Great. The second is consistency. Now, consistency has a lot to do with commitment. And what I mean by that is that once you commit to your idea, you will be consistent. So it's very important that you are not wishy-washy about that pitch, about the idea that you're very clear about what it is, why it's important, all of those things, and that you fully commit to it when you go up there. The third area is reciprocity. Reciprocity is about what's good for you is good for everybody. So what's good for everybody? Now, the other thing about reciprocity is that it's about knowing where you can give something to get something. So in a pitch, you want to make it very clear that there are benefits. Again, there's that word again, benefits. The why of it, the purpose, what's good for the world about your pitch. And then is there a place where you can give something to the person you're pitching to in order to get what you want? The next area is scarcity. Are you familiar with Kickstarter? Kickstarter is a place where you can put a, a project out there and raise money for it online. And the reason, the reason that Kickstarter is about scarcity is because it starts with the idea, I have nothing. I don't have anything, but I want to do this. And if the, I don't get raise the funds from you, I won't be able to do what I want to do. So that's the idea of scarcity. Now, another way to think about scarcity is what will the world be missing if they don't do what you propose? What will Cisco be missing if they don't do what you propose? What will your family be missing if they don't do what you want them to do? Right? So that's scarcity. It's a very important part of persuasiveness. Sometimes we call that FUD, you know, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. 
that's a big part of marketing usually is to use that concept that has to do with scarcity emotionality now what Cialdini calls this liking liking is is the idea that people buy from people they like you've heard that yes people buy from people they like but I'm going to extend that because when you are engaging people in your ideas you can appeal to them in emotional ways and you should it's important it's important to remind them that you're a human being just as they are and that you care about things such as world hunger or whatever your idea has to do with with people spending less time at work and more time with their families with people working better as a group in in uh, in the workplace whatever it is that's an, a hugely important element when it comes to persuasiveness. Data is not what gets people to get excited. Well, maybe a few people, but it doesn't, most people do not get as excited about data. And so the idea is to bring in that human element, bring in something emotional, emotional to your pitch. And finally, the idea of social proof. If she did that, then I want to do it. That's the social proof. But that's the idea behind case studies. Cisco's got all these case studies, and, and what we're saying to our customers is, well, this bank did it, and therefore, you should do it. So make sure you have social proof, and make sure that with all of these things, that you can come up with a story about each one of them, at least one. Stories are very important right now, in communication, mostly because we have a world full of information and data that's overwhelming. And stories help us to make sense of those things. Now, any questions about this? Yes. Uh, I have a question regarding authority. Um, when you say authority, it doesn't necessarily mean that title that you have. Right? No. It is about your <laughs> about your title if that's what gives you the authority. It's whatever gives you the authority or the credibility to say what you're saying. Right? Are you talking about 15 years of experience, yeah. 25 years? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the years of experience that you have. Yes. Yeah. It could be your title. Yeah. But if you don't have that experience and then still you want that like for that session you want to show that authority. Then what do you say? Well I, yes, uh, yes. Um, what she asked is, if you don't have that experience and that um, and the reputation, then and you still want to pitch your idea, what do you do? Well, there are a lot of things that you can do. One thing you can learn to present yourself as a leader. That's something I work on with people all the time: how you stand, how you sit, how you talk to people. How you, how you organize your ideas, all of that can make a difference in how people perceive of you. That's actually how I got into this business in the first place. Because as a performer, I knew a lot of things about standing up in front of people that business people didn't know. And I took them for granted. So that's one thing you can do. But, you know, if it's, if it's something that you need to do quickly, that takes some time to do that, then you have to look at what is the experience you have? What is it your passion? Is it that you that, that you learned something that you feel is important to get across to people? And can you find people who have that experience that you need to support that idea and bring them on as a team with your pitch? So that's a possibility. Yes. Yes, she's asking for a, an example for reciprocity. Reciprocity has to do with um, this idea is good for everybody, right? So, and it's also what's good for me is good for you. There are a lot of ways that reciprocity can, can play out, but it has to do with an overall sense of this being a good thing and that we'll all benefit from it. Can somebody think of a business example for that reciprocity? Alignment around the area, you can always relate other people can relate if you can say that this is 
aligning us all to work towards that common goal. Okay. Great. So she says, getting everybody in alignment on an, on an idea, a business idea, and saying this is good for everybody on the team. That would be an idea, of, uh, uh, an example of reciprocity. Or just another thing would be, uh, like, you're in there to make your pitch, but what can you do to help the other person yes. as well? And will you change your mind a little bit when you learn something from what they said? Exactly. And you're adapting and reciprocating to them as well. Right. Exactly. Okay, so... Yes. Give something, get what you want. Yes. Well, there's lots of examples online. You know, I'll give you a free book if you'll try it for um, two weeks. You know. Or is it more negotiations? Well, it can be negotiations. It can be negotiations. It's, it could be that you sit down at the table and, and negotiate back and forth. But it may be an offer that you give as part of your pitch. You know. Um, how, how many have ever uh, tried some software for free for a month, but you give them your credit card so they can charge it when the month is over? That's a sense of reciprocity. With emotionality, that's probably the one I could find the most stories about. It. Yeah, sure. If you, I, I don't. A hypothetical situation: you develop a, a process in your office that allows people to uh, go home earlier. You know, you get more done sooner. Then um, the story around that might be 
that um, people get to go home to their families. Maybe somebody in, in another group has, um, has the opportunity to go home earlier and therefore their child is not having problems at school or something like that. I mean, you know, you can, you can come up with stories. A story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, by the way. <clears throat> and all stories have, in the beginning, they set the scene. In the middle, there's some kind of trial that people go through or a challenge they face, and in the end, there's something that's resolved. So that's pretty important. Many people think a story is the same thing as an as analogy or a, an explanation, and it's not. She's, she's talking about sharing um, ideas, of actually personal stories about your manager's learning and how that affects you to feel emotionally connected with her, not just in a business sense. Correct? Yeah. All right. So along those lines, the, I, I don't know your name, but when you told us your statement of intention, there was huge passion in what she said. I don't know if you remember that, but that's a great part of a pitch. If you don't know what else to sell, it's your passion. It's whatever you really deeply care about. There's a story about a uh, janitor who worked at NASA in the early days of NASA. And President Kennedy took a, a tour of the facility. And he walked by this man who was standing in the corner. And he said to him, what do you do? And he said, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. I encourage you all to think about your pitch in that way. Not just what you're doing, but what's your passion behind it. Are you doing something bigger than just that pitch or just that, that situation that you're involved in now? Is there something bigger? And that goes back to intention. With all of my clients, I have them write a statement of intention for their life. I encourage you to do that. Get that statement of intention to reflect your passion, your vision, and you will be so much more able to persuade people to see what you want them to see. And finally, the last thing to remember about <laughs> the last thing to remember about your uh, pitch is you must practice it. Now, how many of you practice for presentations? And how do you practice? Stand in front of the mirror and go through it? Is that how you all do it? How many of you just read your slides through a bunch of times? We have walkthroughs with internal Uh-huh. Good. Okay, so walkthroughs with, with people who are guiding you through it. Record it. You can record it. Do a WebEx for yourself, record it, and listen to it. That's a, that's a scary thing to do, yeah? <laughs> okay, so you do it for your teammates and then you get questions from them. Good. Anything else? I'm really pleased to hear so many of you talk about doing it aloud, and I'll tell you why in a second. There's one more thing that I had tried. Uh, it's like an exercise where the person who's trying to pitch has their chair turned around, yeah. not looking at you, and you have to keep talking. If only they get interested, they will turn. It's oh, almost like a voice. It's like a voice. Yeah, <laughs> she, she does it for somebody with their back to her, and then if, if it's interesting, they get, they'll turn around. See, there are reality show people in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Yes. Okay, recording yourself. Yeah, that's that's a great way to do it. 
there's a there's a software, an app called Audio Note that you can use to record yourself and then take notes as you listen back to it. That's a, that's a great way to do it too. All right. Well, the main thing about practicing is that you have to practice aloud. So those of you who don't, start doing it. Practice it aloud. Have you ever noticed if you don't practice aloud, you open your mouth and something completely unplanned comes out of it? <laughs> How does that happen, right? Well, that's because your brain needs to, to um, filter, if you will, what comes through your ear. It actually is a process that has to take place in order for you to be able to say what you want to say in the way you want to say it every time you open your mouth. So practice, practice, practice. Hugely important. Actually, yes. Sometimes I say it in front of my seven-year-old. Oh, yeah. And it's very interesting what kind of comments you get from them. <laughs> yeah. She, she does it for a seven-year-old and is surprised at the responses she gets sometimes. You can also practice in front of your dog, you know, it's fine. <laughs> dog, your cat, any, you might even put post-it notes up on the wall that represent people and practice in front of them, and that will actually help you. Sometimes people are, are less comfortable on a WebEx than they are in front of a bunch of people. They don't get as much feedback from, um, from the people on WebEx, and so therefore they, I tell them to practice by putting post-it notes up and they get the feeling that there are people out there and then it's much better when you do with it. You might try that if, that if you're one of those people. All right, so summary. The ask and the why, which is your intention, is important to guide your communication, to guide your content and your delivery. So intention aligned with content and delivery, hugely important. Number two, know the benefits the why, the purpose, and remember that it's never, ever about you. And then finally, prepare to persuade. When I was thinking about this, I thought about all the things you could do with a pitch. You know, you could, uh, if you look at those people, you could, you could change people's minds about a particular cause. You could contribute to peace. You could manipulate people. That's Anita Perone up there. You could rule a country, rule an empire, Oprah. <laughs> or you could change the world. And everybody, everybody has an idea in their head. Not all as big as this, but everybody could pitch something. And if you want to do that, then I say to you, be brave, prepare, and go get them. <laughs> Thank you so much, that was great. I hope you all try to go out there with a different set of uh, ideas about well, how you're pitching. I'd like to thank you all, and I apologize for the microphone, mostly to you. I'm going to get the best microphone anybody can get this weekend. <laughs> I had enough of this. And uh, thank you for coming. Next month, we're going to have the CEO of Girls in Tech from San Francisco. It's a nonprofit which has fantastic uh, boot camps for women, technical women, yes. and also some entrepreneurship. So I'll be sending out the announcements shortly. Thank you. Thank you.